Dave Blanchard. I'm the editorial director of Business Finance Magazine. And we're here today with David Axon, Executive Director of Finance and Enterprise Performance with Accenture. Today, David is here to answer three quick questions about Enterprise Performance Management, or EPM. Specifically, we're going to talk about scenario-based EPM, based on a report that David helped co-author. So good morning, David. My first question is, how is scenario-based EPM different from traditional scenario planning? It's a very good question, David. Uh, the interesting thing today is scenario planning really had its origins as a strategic planning tool. So it really helped companies visualize long-term into the future. In fact, if you go to Shell Oil's website, you'll see they have scenarios out there for the oil industry through 2050. Now, what we're seeing today is the last few years have been an, env an environment of tremendous volatility within the world. And so what companies have started to begin to do is to look at how they can apply scenario planning techniques to much shorter time horizons. So not just the annual plan, but even the quarterly forecast process. So they're better prepared to react and respond to uncertainty in the marketplace rather than being stuck to a single view of the future, which traditional planning and budgeting processes tend to develop. So that's how scenario-based EPN can really apply to much shorter time horizons, and that's really the essence of the technique. Okay, thank you. What do you see as the advantages for companies to adopt a scenario capability and their EPM processes? Good question. There are a couple of key things that really scenario-based EPM does. One is it gives you a frame of reference as to what you will do when the unexpected occurs. So instead of a material event happening in the marketplace and you throw your hands up and say, now what do we do about it? By having thought about different scenarios and how you would change your action plans, how you will change how you allocate resources, when those events occur, you're really in a position to make better, more confident decisions more quickly. And that's absolutely crucial in today's environment where the window of opportunity to optimize profits or to mitigate risk is increasingly short. So you want to be able to move with speed and confidence. The other key thing is if you've anticipated different scenarios, how different variables of your business may change. It could be exchange rates. It could be interest rates. It could be the price of a barrel of oil. It could be unemployment levels. Now, once you've contemplated how they may change, you can build metrics that will give you an early warning that the scenario upon which you built your plan may no longer be valid and that a new scenario is playing out. So you can actually buy yourself the most valuable com commodity of all in today's world, which is time to react and respond. So those are really the two key benefits, making faster, more confident decisions and having early warning of potential changes in the market environment so you can make those decisions with speed and confidence. All right, thanks. Now, for the benefit of our audience out there, could you share a couple examples of how companies or maybe industries are using scenarios in strategic planning and developing their near and their long-term strategies? You know, one good example I mentioned Shell earlier in the oil and gas industry, one of the key things oil and gas companies are looking at today is the long-term profile of how we replace uh, carbon fuel-based engines, you know, the internal combustion engine powered by petrol or gasoline, and how quickly, you know, hybrids, electric cars, fuel cells begin to take over that particular marketplace. So they can begin to lay out long-term strategies around how they exploit and execute on their plans uh, to bring natural resources to bear in the marketplace. Now, those can have 10, 20, 30-year scenarios attached to them. But if I'm a consumer products company, I may have a much shorter window where maybe I'm launching new products every six to nine months. So one of the things I'm very concerned about is where economic growth is occurring. One of the things we've seen over the last few years is the economic growth rates in different markets have swung wildly. You know, only two or three years ago, the Brazilian economy was growing 7 to 8 percent a year. Last year, it only grew 2 percent a year. That has an impact in terms of where you prioritize which products you're going to sell in which markets, how you're going to advertise and promote those products, and how you're going to price those products. So both from a very long time horizon and very short time horizons, you're beginning to see companies really think about what would I do differently if the environment changes? So as I mentioned earlier, you can react with speed and confidence when those inevitable uncertainties, those unpredictable events occur, so you're not completely flummoxed by the change in the environment, and you can actually make decisions with speed and confidence and drive superior performance. 
You'll find more information about EPM on the Business Finance website. And David, best of luck with your future research into scenario-based EPM. I'm Dave Blanchard.